well, well, well. Look who's up burning the midnight oil. Tis I, Adina. Hey, my blessed babies. I'm outside, so y'all know I'm about to pull some cards. But hey, guys. I miss you guys. Hello to all my blessed baby subscribers. Hello to all of my new random ass viewers who are just here watching me. You're welcome. So I know I dropped a whole bunch of bombs and tea on you guys last night, but it's only right, you know, that if I use my platform to peek into other people's tea, even though it's public because they're public figures, I feel like for balance, it's nothing wrong with me telling you guys about my own situation. And I want to let you guys know, first of all, that I love, 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 love y'all down. So many of y'all have been so supportive in the comments of my recent videos. A lot of you guys who are also my clients have been texting me. Um, and, and actually, a lot of y'all text me all the time and check in on me. And I love that for me. And I love that for y'all. And so I just want you guys to know that the love you guys are, is giving to me is healing. And I realized during this trying time when I was facing um, a, a, what I thought was cancer in my left breast, um, love heals. And if I ever felt that I wasn't loved by anybody else, don't think that I don't know that you guys love me. And I like to, I like to look on the philosophy that as you reap, you shall sow, give, and you shall receive. And I do love you guys from genuinely from the bottom of my heart. I don't tell people I love them and I don't mean it. And I, I like to think that I pour so much love into um, this channel and to the people who view it that when I needed to feel love back, it was abundant. It was plenty of it there. And it was you guys. It was my family and it was you guys. And that will never, ever, ever go unnoticed. You guys just don't know how much you, even being a stranger, somebody on, you know, that you stumbled across on the internet and you may randomly, you know, watch their videos and comment on them, but you never really know the impact that you make on somebody. So think about that every day that you wake up, think about the fact that you have impacted somebody in a genuine, real way. And that somebody is me, each of you. Um, and I love you. And um, I thank God for you. And I was thanking God for you guys when I needed to find reasons to live. You guys were one of the first things that crossed my mind when I needed to find reasons to fight. Um, because I didn't know. I truly believed that I was going to get a, a cancer diagnosis. And I was in so much pain, I didn't care enough to fight. But you guys were one of the reasons. I thought about my blessed babies and how that would hurt you guys if I were to just leave without fighting or, you know, anything like that. I thought about you guys and God reminded me that I had a purpose out here. And so you guys are a blessing to me. And I'll never cease to pray that God return all the love and the abundance and the life that you pour into me, send it back to all of all of my subscribers tenfold, all of you, for the kindness that you've shown me. Um, also, before I get started, one of my busted babies, Daquan, my boo Daquan, go Daquan, go Daquan, go Daquan. Y'all see I'm better, but he asked me if I thought that what happened to me was something someone wished upon me or if it was really, if it was, you know, passed down in my family. It's absolutely in my family. My grandmother uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer in her left breast when she was about my age. And then they took her breast. They did a mastectomy. They took her left breast. She went into remission for about 20 years. And then when I, my senior year in high school is when it came back. And I think 
It was November of 2006 because I graduated high school in 2006 and I went right on to college. It was around November of 2006 when she found, finally passed away, but the cancer had come back, but in other places in her body. That was her left breast. My mother has cysts as well in her breast. However, her first surgery and her first biopsy was in the cyst in her left breast. I have two cousins who just recently went through the same thing I went through. And one of my cousins, she's younger than me, she had to get her cyst removed. It's, it's the left breast for all of us. And so it has a lot to do with uh, my family, but generational karma and trauma that I'm actually working through because of my situation now. My whole family is going through this deep inner healing that I have seen to trigger um, and it's bringing everyone together in a most healing way. And it's it's a beautiful thing, but it's absolutely something that I was already at risk for. Nobody can juju me. I'm not saying that I'm the most powerful, you know, juju woman in the world. But this life that I live in this lifetime, it is I have a very karmic purpose here. I'm literally doing the work now that I was born to do, and that is to bring healing to my family unit. Um, a lot of things that went on in my family that was passed through the generations stopped with me. I was the last one to get molested, but I'm not the youngest of my grandparents' grandchildren. I got two younger sisters and I have a younger cousin and it didn't happen to any of them, but it, I was the last one and it's happened for generations above me. Um, and the way I am handling my breast cancer scare the way I turned it into power um, and healing it has made a ripple effect through the whole family and so because my life in this lifetime is so karmic very 12th house um, I I almost I would I say I chose because I do have free will I could choose to live my purpose and I could choose not to but I chose to live out my purpose at a very young age and so I come with a lot of spiritual protection. I was born with Jupiter retrograde in the 12th house and my north node is in the 12th house. I have built in heavy spiritual protection and that's because I'm not in this lifetime to accumulate karma. I am here to disseminate generational karma for my family. And I, in order for me to do so, I had to choose to live a very upright life. And so I live better than a lot of Christians, you guys know. Um, and that's so that I can um, get rid of my family's karma without gaining any, without messing that up. So many things I do, I feel the responsibility of doing because it wasn't done right in generations before me. And so I don't live my life um, in a way where I attract bad karma into where I need to be worried about people jujuing me. And if I've ever offended or hurt someone, it has never been intentionally. I can say that much. I've never intentionally hurt someone out of pure malice. And even if I acted in a way that, you know, I may have hurt someone, it was never in my intention to do so. And once it's brought to my attention, I always make it right. And so because of the way I live, I don't worry about anybody being able to juju me because I have so much protection so that I can do what I came into this life to do. So no, nobody, nobody was able to juju what I just went through on me or wish that on me successfully. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And anything that's done to me usually not only backfires on the person, but it's used for my good. Oh my God, y'all. It's a, it's a cockroach. I'm going to pause this. I survived. The cockroach got away. It's outside somewhere. I usually don't miss. It must have had a purpose. Anyways. So yeah, now that we got all of that good stuff out of the way, I'm going to do a reading. It's late. It's midnight, 12 o'clock on the dot right now. I just got back from having drinks with my cousins. And that's why I'm in front of y'all tonight because I just had some drinks. And I ain't got nobody to drunk text. 
so it's you guys and i wanted to come before you guys so that y'all can see that i'm all right by the time i'm ready to share my testimony it's because it's already a testimony it's not something that i'm currently going through or i've already found my way out of it and you know that that's why i'm talking about it so i'm good you guys um, so since it's late, I'm not going to do any heavy duty reading. We've had a lot of heavy, heavy duty conversations over the past 24 hours. Y'all want to talk about Carisha and JT? Um, a lot of y'all don't, a lot of y'all don't care about that stuff, but some of y'all do. I, um, if you guys remember my, uh, go back and watch my, um, the last reading I did on Young Miami, I think I, it was like Carisha Estates, uh, estate sale. Something like that. I think a part of the title was a state sale. In that video, I told you guys months ago that Carisha was going to, um, after this situation with Diddy, in order for her to wiggle her way out of it, she was going to go back to music, but as if she's been about that this whole time. And I told you guys that is not true. Whatever they saying about Carisha, whatever academics said about her, because I saw something on the blogs on, on Neighborhood Talk where she didn't want them. It seemed like because they said that they weren't going to post her anymore. And it seemed like she might have been upset with something that they posted of her. Um, I'm sorry to the young Miami fans, but I called that months ago that she was going to try to get back into the music scene to make it seem like that's what she's been about the whole time, but it's not true. She really was grandstanding. She really, 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 really was grandstanding, but she was with Diddy. She was on her big one. She felt like she was doing her big one. Yes, yes, all of that is true. I saw it months ago, so I didn't need to see this. And if you go back to my reading, you will remember that you heard that here first. So I'm, I hate to say that for you young Miami fans, but that's absolutely what she did. And she is kind of throwing this, using this JT situation. She's, what do you guys call it? She's dragging it. But yeah, it's it's a distraction and a diversion. So I'm going to read Carisha. I'm just going to read the energy surrounding her. All right. Most High Mother and Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for my gift. Thank you for these people. Thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for healing. Thank you for you. Most High Mother and Father God, please allow me to see into the spirit, the soul, the energy of Carisha, Young Miami. She's been doing a lot of interviews lately, getting back into the music scene, you know, doing interviews. And I just like to know the energy surrounding her and her interests in the music scene, the reasons that she did that interview. How's her relationship with JT? How's her relationship with Diddy? Spirit, please allow me to see the current energy going on with Young Miami. Well, currently... Now, I would say that usually the Nine of Swords in reverse is a lessening of anxiety, and it is, because it is and it isn't. Carisha's been doing all the all the all all this press lately, and she's been vocal lately, um, because she does need to take some of the Diddy pressure off of her, because she was in bed with Diddy, complicit with Diddy. And so everything she's doing now it's to lessen the conversations about her and Diddy. Even if it's negative conversations about her and her friend and her ex-bandmate, even that is better than conversations about her being in bed with Diddy. Challenging her, though, is that not everybody is falling for it. Her plan isn't going as smoothly as she anticipated she would. This Two of Wands... I'm very familiar with because I've said before in the past where I've um, done readings on clients to see if we were going to get a clear to close, I would pull this. 
And this will let me know that we're going to get a clear to close. And then the three of wands would be the process of moving. And, we're, and so it's like the clear to close is saying, yes, you've been approved for the mortgage loan. Now it's just getting you to the closing table. It's a plan. In reverse, the plan isn't going so smoothly. And that's her challenge because people are calling her out still for her situation with Diddy. This is a two of wands, her and JT. So the challenge is she's using negative conversations about her and JT to distract from the Diddy situation. However, a lot of people are not letting that skate. And that's why it's in the challenging position. Recent past, she She offered up information in her interview. Like I said, as a diversion, she was very vocal in her Carisha Please interview. That's what this is. And it was done because of the Diddy situation. Carisha is kind of like on a PR campaign now to clean herself up after her frolicking around with Diddy. And because of her current position, we're talking about her trying to use various distractions in order to take her to lessen the Diddy conversation around her. Well, in the recent past, she just was forthcoming with information in her interview where she had to sit down and spill her own tea. Now, the Knight of Pentacles is an employee of, I mean, the Knight of Cups or the Knight in any deck is an employee of the king. The king in this matter would be the king of cups, a Pisces, Scorpio, or cancer male. So if, because I see this upright, I do not believe that Carisha does not, does no longer communicate with Diddy, or if she's trying to make it seem like he was the downfall of her life. I don't believe that because this interview she did is on behalf of the king, which is why it came up as the Knight of Cups, not the Page of Cups. I would have liked to see the Page of Cups in her recent past because that would have been Carisha speaking her innocent truth as the Page. But as the Knight, she's being sent on this interview on behalf of the king, who she still seems to be very fond of. I'm sorry, I, I just hear things and I feel like things are crawling all over the place and they're out to get me. Near future, Eight of Swords. Uh, it's not going to go the way you plan, Carisha, but, but you already know that because it's happening now. Nine of Swords in reverse is in your present position. Eight of Swords. And the thing is, the conversations will die down, which is why we're going from the, the nine in the present to the eight in the near future because... You know, your interviews won't be fodder for long. You won't be fodder for long. Um, however, it's the eight of swords upright because your plan backfired and now you're stuck in this mess that you kind of created, that you kind of kicked up on your own with the interview that you chose to do. Crowning you, again, Carisha is attempting to dig up old stuff or things that aren't necessarily relevant but anymore because at the time none of this JT stuff mattered to her she could care less what JT was doing but she has to go back to this stuff now and make it seem like it's been an issue for her because she needs again to a diversion and a distraction and she's using her bandmate she's using JT to do so and, and old things, the Six of Cups in reverse is a card of leaving old and childish things in the past. And it's crowning her because in her mind, none of this stuff mattered. JT did not matter to her. Music did not matter to her when she was with Diddy. But she has to kick it up now to make it seem like she wasn't complicit with Diddy this whole time. 
And so below, the reason for all of this is that what she wanted, her wish when she was with Diddy and she was riding on her high horse is flipped upside down now. It's having everything that you thought you wanted and realizing that it ain't what you wanted. This means because things didn't go her way with Diddy. I'm, I have to just say it that way. I have to say, I have to read the cards the way. Current position, she's willing to create beef and discord where there seemed to have been peace between her and JT. There seemed to have been peace, even if it was agreeing to go their separate ways. Because it seems like there was peace because JT probably acknowledged that Young Miami was doing her thing and Young Miami was doing her thing and she really wasn't studying JT. So there was harmony between the two. Even if they weren't the best of friends, there was harmony between the two. In Young Miami's current action position, imbalance, disharmony, discord. But she's doing this on purpose. Again, none of this stuff mattered to her, but it need, it. she has to make it matter to her now. External to her is JT. She wants no parts of what Young Miami is doing. And don't expect JT to go back and forth online or throw subliminals at um, Carisha because she feels like she knows what she's trying to do and she's not going to feed into it. Hopes and fears for Carisha is her relationship with Diddy. It has to be over. But she she feels unfortunate about it. She didn't want that. It's only over because of his issues. Ace of Swords reverse. Carisha is going to lie. I don't know what she's going to be saying in the future, but it won't be the truth. I'll clarify with that. It's like she has no choice but to, to give up and go back to where she didn't want to go. She didn't want to go far in music. And that wasn't the plan for her. But she is like, in order to get past this ditty, her being complicit, Eight of Pentacles and knowing, Seven of Cups in reverse, everything that was going on with Diddy and who he was, she kind of has to just give up and go back to music. And it, it sucks for her. She hates that. She hates that because she really, really, really thought she was going to, you know, ride off into the sunset of celebrity with Diddy. And she would have. She might have. As long as she would have found herself useful to Diddy, he would have kept her around. And she was absolutely complicit. I've been saying this ever since I began reading her. He found his geese lane in her. Why is the Ace of Swords in reverse her outcome? Will of Fortune. Whatever she says, she's saying it to turn the will in her favor. Because she has no choice. Because she's also legally um, involved in some of the allegations against Diddy. It's like the house of cards fell. And so she has no choice now but to lie moving forward about her, her passion for her career as a rapper, about, you know, her real beef with JT, about everything. She just has to say whatever she has to say in order to make the situation better for her. And so we'll never get Carisha to tell us the truth. Obviously, she's not going to tell us, yeah, I, I was involved. I was complicit. I did this and I did that. Did. We're not going to get that. She signed an NDA. There's a lot she can't talk about. So we won't get the truth from Young Miami. We won't get her truth. We won't get her to talk, huh? We won't get that. She can't talk. Queen of Cups in reverse because she was complicit with Diddy. She was his right hand. She was complicit. And so she can't talk. Not only the NDA, but because if she talked about her truth with Diddy, then she would be putting herself in the line of fire. I believe that P. Diddy or someone associated with him is paying, paying for her either to get back and like get, I don't know, uh, financing maybe her attorney 
or trying to help her get back into the industry some way. She has some help from Diddy. It's really not much else to say here. I want to look into the Knight of Cups as her recent past. That interview she did. Five of Cups reversed. Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Knight of Pentacles in reverse. It's like she had no choice but to do this so that she can move on from the Diddy Saga with Revolt maybe and get her Carisha Please back because she wasn't going to be able to do it. They, I guess they told her you won't be able to do it unless you pretend like you've moved on from Diddy because of who he is. If you make it seem like, oh my God, you know, I was just this girl having fun. I had no idea. And I've, I've dumped him when I found out. She has, she had to do that. She had to do it. Eight of Swords and Eight of Swords in her near future. I'll stop there. The Hangman. She kind of put herself out there. And it, it didn't go the way she planned, as we as I mentioned. And so she 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 kind of hung herself with this one. Probably felt like she should have kept something to herself or not said something. And now everybody's talking about her and JT. I would like to say that um She doesn't care for JT. She doesn't care for JT. Something about her dark skin, because I saw the queen of um, wands in reverse. That's a Sag card. Um, and it usually comes out for me when I'm talking about colored, women of color. Um, maybe they thought she wasn't attractive. Something to do with her skin, just her appearance. I see that on the bottom of the deck. Um, she doesn't care for JT. Um, however, this situation didn't go so smoothly for her because people are kind of sticking up for JT. She thought that because of her popularity and because of her looks, me thinks she thought, oh shit, a spider. Oh my God. Oh my God. Why don't you just go the fuck away and stop trying to... I'm sorry, you guys, but... I gotta kill this bitch. Just give me one second. You just give me one fucking second. I will kill you with anything. Damn, that's empty. And it's just gonna sit there. Y'all hold on, cause <laughs> I can't let the spider kill me. It's dead now. Stone cold killer. I, I don't I don't usually miss. Um but yeah, that's that. Whatever they say about Carisha online about her all that stuff, it, it, it looks to be true. Sorry if you're a young Miami fan. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>